Welcome to the CDT research skills session on how to improve your visibility online so that you are discoverable and happy with what appears online about you. As a first step, it is important to know what information is already out there about you so you can improve it and develop your online profile as it suits you. A helpful thing to do is to run a regular digital identity health check. This involves doing a Google or DuckDuckGo search on your name using your full name and any variants. You might need to add Cambridge. Note the results. Is this what you would like others to see? There is full guidance on what else to consider when doing a health check in the guide linked to here. Depending on what your digital identity health check found, here are 10 tips for improving your online visibility. One, create profiles on sites that rank highly in search results, then link back from there to your main profile. Consider having a presence on platforms such as LinkedIn, Twitter, Academia Edu, Facebook, Google Plus or Google Scholar, or ResearchGate. Remember that academic institutions rank highly too. Try to keep your name consistent everywhere you use it. This will help people to identify you accurately. Two, get an ORCID and use it everywhere. Include it on your website, your social media accounts, even your email signature. Personalize your web addresses. You can use so-called vanity URLs to do this. They incorporate your name into the URL of your profile on LinkedIn, for example, and this makes you more discoverable. Four, create a single home for your online presence. You could use your own website or blog as a space for developing your ideas. This gives you control over what appears about you online. Make sure to include your name in the web address and include an about page, including your name in the page title and in the content. Five, Link your social media and blog or website profiles using social media dashboards. You can find social media dashboards or tools, for example, there's one called About Me. It creates a simple landing page to showcase your social media posts. Remember to add links from your social media profiles to your main blog or website. Six, write guest posts on the high ranking blogs and link back from them to your main profile. This allows you to have a presence on a much more specific subject or general research space. Seven, do you want a personal or professional digital presence? It is a good idea to explain how you are using them. Do you want to mix the two or keep them separate? For example, Charlie Smith or Charles M. Smith. If you're using both, consider additional privacy settings on personal accounts so that nothing inappropriate appears on either. Explain how you use a personal one and link to the professional one. Eight, check what images are associated with you. Are there any you would prefer to be private? Review your social media settings. You can remove tags of yourself from other people's photos. Remember to take a good quality profile photo and use it consistently. Nine, maximize the potential of your profile biographies. These are important for making people want to connect with you. They often have limited space, so your biography needs to be clear and focused. Use your biography to showcase your skills and experiences and use it across your accounts so you are sending a consistent message. 10, measure your impact online. Track your citations and mentions to see their attention outside of academia as well as from within it. Twitter is a very influential platform to have a presence on. Twitter has around 300 million active monthly users, so you need to make yourself noticed and visible. Here are some examples of Twitter biographies of members of the chemistry department. Make people want to follow you by appearing relevant and interesting. You can see that some accounts mix personal and research related tweets. Some accounts appear to indicate their content is more about research than personal. You can show your personality, however, within the professional account, just keep it light. Some people have included the Twitter handle for their group, which is a good idea in itself, as well as relevant hashtags. This in particular gets you more exposure by linking you to the topics in your field. Background profile pictures help you illustrate yourself, your work or your interests. 
they are important for gaining attention. One person here has used the generic Twitter egg for their profile picture. The lack of a bio or photos and even tweets can make it hard for people to trust your account is genuine and they may even block you. Another highly indexed platform on Google is LinkedIn. It is one of the most popular social networking sites for academics and professionals in general. According to LinkedIn, it has more than 660 million users in more than 200 countries and territories worldwide. It's owned by Microsoft. LinkedIn is basically Facebook for professionals. Use it to create a network of colleagues and professionals in your field from whom you can seek advice. It is helpful for staying in touch with past and present colleagues in your network. You can use it to discover connections when job seeking. In fact, jobs are advertised on LinkedIn. One key feature is the ability to make and receive recommendations and endorsements of your skills with others in your network. You can use LinkedIn as a CV to list your skills and experience. It is also possible to join professional groups and to participate in discussions. This is the public version of my LinkedIn profile. The profile photo has been made public in the privacy settings. This is the same photo I use everywhere online. The institution I currently work for, as well as where I got my degree is present, as well as links to further websites. There is content in the about section of the profile, which can be used to highlight skills and interests. You can see uh, articles that I've posted in, on LinkedIn. The experience section outlines my career so far, a bit like a CV. This is the education section where I've highlighted my qualifications. You can also have a languages section. You can see that I've joined uh, a few LinkedIn groups, which is good for professional networking. You need to join LinkedIn in order to be able to view my full profile. Another good thing you can do to improve your visibility online is to create a Google Scholar profile. These are highly indexed on Google and are, well, quite scholarly. You can even set up a Google alert for yourself so you can see what is appearing on the web about you. Apparently celebrities do this all the time. Sources that can be tracked by Google include blogs, news, websites and videos. So I'm now going to summarize what I've covered on how to improve your visibility. Make your profile stand out. Remember that professional collaborators, funders and employers will be looking for you. Keep your profile up to date. Out to date information looks unprofessional. Rerun the digital identity health check regularly or before key events such as conferences or when writing job applications. Remember the eight or nine second rule. Research suggests that it takes people just eight or nine seconds to find the search result they want. People do not often look past the first page of results. If you don't appear there, you're effectively invisible online. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it was helpful.